Hello, friends. My name is Yuri, and I specialize in repairing audio equipment and other electronic devices. Today, we have an Allen and Heath Zone 96 mixer with issues on the phono outputs of channels 2 and 4. Let's try connecting the device and quickly checking the line and phono channels. While I prepare the channels, let me quickly explain something important about phono channels. These channels are quite sensitive and can easily get damaged if the filter is incorrectly operated or connected. For example, if a line level signal, like the output from a CDJ, is plugged into a phono input, it can create an undesired overload effect. This kind of misuse often leads to the mixer malfunctioning, requiring repairs like the ones I'm about to do. I've just finished checking the line inputs, and now we're getting closer to the issue. It's not the second and fourth phono channels causing the problem, but rather the first and third channels, each has a defective side. To keep track of these, I'm marking the faulty channels with some colorful tape so I don't lose sight of them during the repair process. After completing the diagnosis, I'll start disassembling this device. My plan is to remove the channel boards for channels 1 and 3 and take a closer look at them. Since the disassembly process isn't very exciting, I'll speed it up in the video and take this opportunity to learn how to use the iMovie app on my phone. This is my first video made entirely on my phone, so please don't be too harsh. My goal here is to share my knowledge, and hopefully, it will be helpful to some of you. One challenge with repairing the Zone 96 is that there are no official schematics for the device, meaning you need to rely on logical thinking or reverse engineering. But today, with this phono issue, I think we'll manage just fine without a schematic. is disassembled i've carefully removed the channel boards for channels one and three as suspected there are visible issues with some of the components on the boards it's always interesting to see how even small mistakes like connecting a line signal to a phono input can lead to bigger problems over time during the visual inspection i noticed that the 10 ohm safety resistors were blown these resistors are designed to limit current in case the device or in this case, the phono section, draws an abnormal amount of current. When this happens, the resistors burn out as a safety mechanism. This design is similar to the Zone 92, where 10 ohm resistors are also commonly used as protection in various parts of the circuit. Typically, these resistors are used to limit current on the plus 15 volts and minus 15 volts supply rails that power the operational amplifiers. The blown resistors in this case indicate that the operational amplifiers are most likely damaged. To save time, and since 8080 operational amplifiers are not particularly expensive, I'll go ahead and replace them preemptively. Replacing a few operational amplifiers doesn't just take a few minutes. This repair took about 40 minutes to complete. The flux I prefer to use is the SMD291 from ChipQuick, which works great for this type of job. After replacing the op amps and the faulty resistors, I reinstalled the channel boards into the mixer, hoping everything would work as expected. For testing, I used a low volume line signal from a sound card on the phono channels to save time and avoid setting up a turntable. However, after the repair, I always perform a final test with a real turntable to ensure the device functions exactly as intended by the manufacturer. Once I confirmed that everything was working perfectly, I wanted to take a moment to thank all of you, my dear viewers, for watching. Feel free to leave comments or ask any questions if you're curious about something. See you next time.